Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am talking with Helen all about standing out and being seen and how that really will help you boost your sales as a mompreneur. So with that being said, welcome into the podcast. Oh, hey, Amy. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. Appreciate it. Absolutely. I am so excited for this conversation. But before we dive in, can you tell us more about yourself, who you are, what you do, and who you serve? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm Helen. As you can probably hear from my accent, I'm over in the UK. It's so great to connect with you, Amy, across the ponds. And um, I'm a sales coach. I've been a solo entrepreneur for 19 years, all in sales, built four businesses from scratch. And now what I really love to do is help particularly women to stand out and be seen online because there is so much noise out there there are 60 million social media posts every single day and we need to make sure we're doing something that makes us be seen and heard so I do that through helping people create a really powerful personal brand message really interesting um, content no Dullsville content around here and really allowing you to serve your ideal clients But more importantly, it's about you feeling like you are able to be yourself and being authentically you, having the confidence to show up as yourself 100%. That is what is going to draw people in. So it's all through that. Let's create that brand around you. Let's get you out there on social media. But let's also be really interesting with it and grow your business and grow your sales. Oh, my gosh. That is so good. And I love how... You talk about feeling authentically you because that right there, I know for me, when I stepped into my authenticity at first, it felt a little off. You know, it was like, ooh, it's kind of scary. But once you really embrace it, I feel like that's where our power is as entrepreneurs. That's what makes us stand out. Mm -hmm. So, and you're so right. It is quite scary to start with. And let's be honest about that. I'm so all about integrity. But it's like, I remember, you know, last summer having this moment when I was literally like, I am so done with not being myself. And it's ridiculous. I think it comes with experience. It comes with age. And it comes with coming to that point where you just think, why? Why am I so afraid? What's stopping me? What am I afraid of? Who am I afraid of? Whose opinions? Whose judgment am I afraid of? Like, you've got to kind of be yourself. And the minute that you do, you're so right, Amy, the minute that you do, your business will grow because people will be able to connect with the real you and they will connect with the coach, the entrepreneur, the service provider, whoever it is that they need to help them with their business or help them with their motivation, inspiration, whatever it is that you're doing on social media. They want to connect with the real person because that is when you are truly going to be able to serve your clients by being you yourself and unapologetically just don't care what anyone else thinks, go for it. Oh, that is so, so good because that's when it feels good and it doesn't feel just icky anymore because I think for so long we've we've surrounded sales with this kind of icky, sleazy connotation and when you really step into your authentic self, it gets easier because basically you're just forming relationships with others, right? Yeah, that's what business is all about, isn't it? It's about building relationships and connections. It's about listening to what your clients need and then serving them. And this is what I build into all the value um, into all the content. It's all about giving value. It's what I teach my clients. Give, 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 give. And I actually did a post just yesterday all about like my clients often ask me how much value is too much? Am I giving too much away? Am I giving enough? I don't want to, you know, we fear sometimes that we're going to give away enough for an entire course worth of material on social media but actually I'm a firm believer that you need to give as much as possible we have a duty to serve you know the information is out there anyway and we have a duty to serve it up in a way that is uniquely us with our own spin on it our own opinions our thoughts our beliefs our values 
And that is when you're going to connect with your dream clients. Like, yes, Amy's the person for me. She's the one who I love her values. I love her beliefs. I love what she stands for. I love what she doesn't stand for, what she stands up against. This is when you're going to make those really strong relationships, as you said. And it's, you can do all of that through your personal brand message and your content, because that is where the sales begin. That's where your marketing opportunity starts. And every single post that you do is absolutely an opportunity for you to market yourself and your services. So yeah, you have to get that right. You have to get that really, really strong. Yes. Oh my gosh. I cannot agree more. Yes. One of my mentors, um, Jessica DeRose, she's like, you know, give it all away for free. She yeah. gives. I love book. her. She's amazing. She yeah. is. And I love how she uses the analogy about listening to music in your car. You know, you're, you're consuming all this music. It's great, but you're still going to buy the concert ticket when that van comes to town because you're paying for the experience. It's how it makes you feel. And it's the same thing in business. You're paying for that accountability, the implementation, the person to walk by your side to help you through those blocks and collapse time because it's more of a mind game than anything because you're absolutely right. You can look anything up online. I mean, the information is out there. It's just, you know, give it all away for free because 99.9% .9 of people are not going to actually implement what they're learning. I feel like we've become so overloaded with information and just consumption, consumptionitis that we aren't taking action. Are you seeing that as well with your clients? Oh, it's so true. And I think you're so right. We said, I know I've heard Jessica DeRose say this as well. It's, there are such a small percentage of people who will actually integrate and implement what they learn. You know, people go around listening to podcasts in the car while they're walking their dogs, while they're cooking, whatever it is that they're doing, but who actually then sits down and implements that. So yeah, absolutely. What you are doing is giving people a flavor of who you are, how you teach, how you show up, like you said, how you support and hold space for the emotion, that entrepreneurial roller coaster ride that we're all on. You know, someone to be there to catch you when you fall. That's what you hire a coach for. You know, I'm with my coach for, I've been with my coach for three months. I've just signed again for another 12. You know, I want that net. I want that safety blanket, you know, whatever it is, comfort blanket, safety net. I'm getting them mi the mixed up the same, you know, you need that support. And that's what you get from a coach. The value that you give on your social media is really people to give people a flavor. The post I did yesterday was actually an analogy of, um, I used to actually have a wedding cake design business. And I was talking about how when I went to wedding fairs, you know, every weekend, I would take the best samples, you know, the best cake samples I could possibly make. I didn't make them with the cheapest ingredients. I didn't get them out of the freezer. I didn't buy them from the local store and pretend they were mine. They were so freaking good. They were like <laughs> so good. But I needed to give people those, that taste of who I am, you know, and that's the same with your content. Put your spin on it, you know. I take cake samples and I'd make something really different. I'd throw some limoncello liqueur on top of my lemon cake, you know. Go and taste the amazing, like different kind of things. Throw your own spin on your content. But when people engage with you when they actually buy from you that's when the magic comes and so you cannot be afraid to give away your knowledge your expertise because yeah we underestimate as you said the number of people that will actually go and implement what you're doing anyway so you may as well just give them your best that's what I say I love it and that was such a perfect post that analogy is spot on why are we holding so much back why are we holding these secrets because there there is no secret the information is already out there where do you think that we kind of got stuck in our heads by thinking that we have to like hold information back like there's going to be some secret when when clients start working with us that's just scarcity that is really that mindset of like not feeling abundant and that kind of worry that there are other people out there doing the same of course there are a million fitness coaches there are a million business coaches there are a million mindset coaches you know but there's only one you um and people will buy you they're not buying the knowledge they're not buying what you're teaching them necessarily. Of course, they are to a certain degree, but they are buying you. They're buying into your support, your personality, your compassion, 
your authenticity, your strength, your confidence, all of those things, they're buying you. And there's only one of you. So you're only competing against you. And that is why it's so important to create this really powerful personal brand and do that through like the words, the language, the content, get exciting through the, the things that you say, like I said, get edgy, get interesting, put that on your social media, show people who you are. And that's when people will connect. Oh, so good. Because yes, you're only competing against you. And once we make that mindset shift, that's where so many opportunities open up. I know for myself it did. And I mean, the, the scarcity mindset, it's primal. But yeah. once you develop the awareness around it, that's when the opportunities appear and doors just keep opening over and over and over. I cannot tell you how many amazing connections I have formed by the women doing exactly the same thing that I am doing that have the exact same audience that I do, but I'm not going to be for everyone. And that's okay. I don't want to be for everyone. That's why I just love having this community of women around me because who better understands exactly what we're going through. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I love supporting other women and, you know, we're on, we're doing a podcast what right now. And it's because I genuinely want to support other women. It's hard enough, especially right. you know, as parents, it's not easy. There is, it's a great big world out there. And I absolutely love the fact we've connected on social media, you know, the connections you can make across the world come on let's just cheer each other on you know there is no need for anything other than that I think that comes with time and experience and age you know it really does and you just realize look it's fine there is enough out there for us all and just help each other out and you know I love it's why I love networking as a big part of of my kind of growth strategy but also in, as well equally to support other women in you know online business um, you know, let's let's help share what we we do with each other, and um, it's so important. And also, you know, it helps it helps put people's skills in front of the other the people that need it. So, you know, it's not just about you or business; it's about actually helping people. You know, I know someone that might need a fantastic fitness coach. Let's help them to feel great about themselves. Let's put that fitness coach in front of my friends. You know, my business friends. So, there's so many reasons to like feel that abundance and actually live by it as well. Just yeah, let's just cheer each other on. That's what I say. Oh, I love it. Because if we can change that narrative, I mean, how yeah. awesome would this world be? Because you're right, it's hard enough. You know, it's mm -hmm. hard enough wearing all of the hats that we do yeah. every single day. <laughs> but honestly, I feel like networking and collaboration are two of the most overlooked and underutilized keys to business success that there are. Because mm -hmm. in collaborating with other women in networking by getting in different rooms by putting myself out there i mean that's what brought you and i together you know we met through a mutual mentors a coffee chat and membership program that we're a part of and it's in getting in those rooms by putting yourself out there and genuinely helping other people supporting them cheering them on hey how can i serve you how can i help you that really rises raises us all up and helps us all thrive. Absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the strategies I teach, but you know, as a business coach, it is about helping, you know, that having that strategy of, of like you said, communicating, networking. I'm starting my own network, you know, as when this goes out, there'll be my own networking thing that I'm doing every single week because that is to help my community, you know, to like I said, share resources and, and join. I I get such a buzz from when I see, you know, maybe my clients collaborating together. In, you know they're in my mastermind and they'll go off and do a collaboration on their own I'm like oh my gosh I brought them together it's so good you know when you see that those little connections that you've you've created or you've en enabled it's 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 magic I love it oh I do too and it just for me like that's like what gives me joy that's my spark mm -hmm. seeing people come together because you know, I maybe introduce them to someone they had not known existed. I mean, that just fills my cup so much and just mm -hmm. brings me so much joy. It's good, isn't it? It's so good. Oh, I love it. So as business owners, we see a lot of trends going on on the social media, in the social media space. What is your take on trends? 
You mean in terms of like reels or audio and that kind of trends? Yes. Um, yes. So like it, when you're trends. right, when you're scrolling on Instagram and you're seeing everybody doing the same post, the same reel, doing the same over and over and over. What's your take on that? Okay, so in terms of content trends, I say take a trend and if it's for you, run with it. If that feels aligned with you, absolutely. But do not force a trend on yourself. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. There are so many interesting, exciting, unusual, unique ways that you can create content. I'm all about the hooks. Let's grab people, but not just the usual. Here's three ways. Let's create some different hooks. Let's create some eye-catching content. Let's create a video where you're throwing a cup against the wall. I don't know. I'm talking about an extreme case, but let's make something very, very edgy, eye-catching, either through the words, the language that appear on the screen, the things that you say in the first three seconds. You have three seconds to hook someone in. Or whether it's by, um, you know, what you, the action, an actual action that happens physically in that, those first three seconds. And it's about go with the trend if you want to, but always be thinking, how can I change this trend or up level this trend or maybe do a different version of it, like my own version of this trend? The beautiful thing about social media, one of the reasons why I'm obsessed with it, I mean, I could literally post like 15 times a day. I have so many ideas coming out of my head. You can use this as a creative outlet. And I know not everyone finds it that easy to post. When you find something you're so passionate about, you will find it easier. I just want to say that and throw that in there. But if you can just find a way to add on your own spin, to a trend that will just make you feel better. It will make it a lot easier for you to create content and also make your audience see who you really, really are. So don't feel you have to always follow those trends. Do what feels right for you um, and create your own trends. You know, one of the best things you can do is a spoken reel where it's your own audio, it's original audio. And they're so great to teach people, walk people through frameworks, talk about your values, your beliefs, maybe call people out on things. But if you can like create your own trends in that way, that's a winner. So I say they're easy to create as well. So that's something that everyone can do quite easily. Yeah. Oh, that is so good. And I love how you said, you know, using social media as a creative outlet. That yeah. right there is so awesome. So how do you manage all of the ideas that you have? Because I think as business owners, mm -hmm. we get stuck because we have too many ideas that we're not implementing any of them. How do you stay organized? Okay, so what I do is this is what I walk through all my clients with is we start with the content pillars. And I know this is quite an overused term, but it really will help you to get organized. And I actually have like a three point strategy, like a content creation triangle. So one side, one point of that triangle is the content pillars that you have. So you want three to five. One of those should be you. It should be absolutely you. Um, so your audience get to know you. But you need to have those things um, organized. So you know exactly what you're going to talk about. Personally, I use an app called Trello. There are so many different things. And I basically, whenever I have an idea, it goes onto Trello, whether I'm on my phone or I'm on my laptop, it will go under one of those five columns that I have my content pillars and I just write down ideas as I brainstorm them and then I can go back to that and um, the other part the other sort of side of the triangle the second point of the triangle is kind of the angle that you're going to take and again I have another Trello board where I think of all different things that I can the ways I can speak about those topics so is it going to be inspiring is it going to be belief breaking is it going to be a framework for example and then the third part of the triangle, the third point is like, is it a reel? Is it a carousel? You know, is it a static post? Is it a story? Is it a live? And like what exactly type of content that's going to be? And it's a case of picking one from each of those corners and putting it together. But getting yourself organized is key. I, I definitely use Trello. I'd advise you to have the things written down so that you've got somewhere to put all your ideas and then you've got a bank of things to go to. But I also do believe there's a massive part of going with the flow and being intuitive. And in the moment, that post, that thought, that 
inspiration that you have while you're kind of maybe speaking with a client or you listen to a podcast they've given me so many ideas I'm like yes I need to say this they are sometimes the best performing posts because they're so like full of emotion and energy that people can feel it you know they can feel that through your language so I definitely have room for a bit of flexibility in there as well Um, But I, you know, everyone's different. Some people like to be organized and have all their content mapped out for the week ahead. Some people like to go with the flow and every, I can't really sort of say I work with my clients, however is best for them. You've just got to choose kind of, you know, how your lifestyle is, you know, your personality as well and what's best for you. But some form of organization where you at least have a direction in what you're going to say is really helpful. Oh, I love that because that right there, that's what creates that cohesive brand. When you do have those brand pillars, when you take that time to be intentional, but too, you spoke about being in the moment and that is so important because I have found that too. You know, there's posts that you spend all this time on, you know, making sure that they look just right. And then, you know, there's other days where I just, you know, go and talk to the camera and those do so much better. So yeah, it's just really being in the moment, but being organized at the same time. I love how you married both of those together because it's true. And just figuring out what works for you, because I'm the same way. I love myself a good Trello board. Like to me, I'm very visual. That just, that makes my heart happy to see, you know, just different things organized in those little columns. Huh, it's beautiful. But if that doesn't work for you, if writing things down in a notebook works, then do it. If you use the notes app on your phone, do it. There's so many options. It's a matter of finding what works for you. So true. So true. And yeah, everyone's different. We were talking before we started recording as well about the different seasons of business. When you have little kids or you have teenagers, you're going to have different kind of amounts of time and space to give and brain space to give to your to your business so yeah definitely do what feels right and don't compare don't try and kind of think well if they're doing a Trello board I need to do a Trello board if it doesn't work for you don't do it absolutely not no exactly oh my gosh Helen this was such a great conversation so many valuable nuggets of wisdom and again if you take nothing else away it's just start implementing be yourself and start implementing what you are taking in and you will see that needle moving in your business Helen where can we learn more about you and how can we get into your world Oh, thanks, Sony. It's been amazing to chat with you. So yeah, I would love to invite all your listeners over to my Facebook community, which is super engaged. It's a fantastic place to come and network with lots and lots of other like-minded entrepreneurs. And it's the Purpose, Potential and Power Facebook group. It's the same name as my podcast as well, but that is a really great place to come and connect. Like I said, I'm really proud of it. It's a fantastic community over there. So yeah, I'd love to invite all your listeners over there. Come and say hi, come and join. And um, yeah, I would love to see you. And we will link that up in the show notes and definitely make sure you get into the community, get into those new rooms, network, grow, get to know the people in the world around you because That is where the transformation happens. It's in getting in those rooms, networking, collaboration, that you will grow. Helen, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to share your value with our community. Thanks, Amy. All right, mamas, until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 